Hello class, so in this video we are going to be talking about intercepts. So let's just start with what their definitions are. So x-intercept, otherwise known as root, the coordinate where the function intersects the x-axis, y-intercept, the coordinate where the function intersects the y-axis. Okay, that's pretty simple, pretty straightforward, so let's look at how do we find them. Let's analyze their definitions and that will help us actually find out what um, they are and how to get them. So coordinate, what that means is you're going to have something x comma y. And where the function intersects the x axis. So let's understand what the x axis is. So when you have a coordinate plane, then you have x and y coordinates, right? So what is that? That's the x axis. How can we understand it? Well, it's a line, right? What does that line describe? That describes where y is just 0. Because if you think about it this way, you start with, there's the origin, 0, 0, right? The y value there is 0. If you go up, y increases. If you go down, y decreases. But if you're there or anywhere on that level, then y is still 0 no matter what. Therefore, y equals 0. In other words, what you want to figure out is, where does f of x equal 0? Because f of x, that's a y value, right? So, set those to 0. And then solve for x. Alright, so let's look at y-intercept then. Coordinate, so we know, again, you get an x comma y somewhere where the function intersects the y-axis. So by that same logic, so let's look back at this. If we start the origin and then we go left or right, starts at 0, 0, and then x is going to decrease or increase depending on that. But exactly on the axis, x equals 0. So in other words, to find the y-intercept, we're going to find where x equals 0. So f of 0, just plug that directly in to all the x's. So let's just look at some quick examples of how this works. So here we have f of x equals x squared minus x minus 6. x-intercept, that is where f of x equals 0, right? So how can we figure out where that equals 0? Easiest way is actually to factor it. So this is going to factor to x minus 3 times x plus 2. And we can see that if this equals 0, or if this equals 0, then we get 0. Because we're going to have 0 times whatever, and 0 times whatever. So x minus 3 equals 0 means x equals 3. x plus 2 equals 0 means x equals negative 2. Are these the x-intercepts? No. They are 3 comma 0 and negative 2 comma 0 because remember they are coordinates. How about the y-intercept? So that is where f of 0 is. So in other words where x equals 0. So substitute that directly into either of these because they're equivalent right so it doesn't really matter I find it easier to just pl plug it into the non-factored form because literally everything will become zero except for that and we just get negative six left so zero comma negative six is our y-intercept let's look at a few more so we have this it's already in factored form right so that's easy to deal with. So where g of x equals 0, we know that the x values for that are just going to be negative 2, negative 1, and negative 3. That's pretty simple to see there, right? Because those are the values that are going to make the function equal 0. Each of those parts will equal 0. So the coordinates are negative 2, 0, negative 1, 0, and negative 3, 0. What about the y-intercepts? 
Again, that's just where we set x equal to 0. In other words, we just have 2 times 1 times 3 squared. So that's 2 times 9, 18. So 0, 18 is our y-intercept here. Now let's look at this. When you look at this at first, you might think, oh my goodness, what is that? So this is the Greek letter usually pronounced gamma, and this is the Greek letter pronounced phi or phi. However, um, I pronounce them like they actually do in Greece, and this is gamma and phi. So I'll pronounce them that way. So the phi intercept, that is where gamma phi equals zero. We can see that that happens pretty easily at phi equals one, negative two, and seven. So we got one comma zero, negative two comma zero, and seven comma zero as our phi intercepts. And now I guess we can still call it a y-intercept, or you can call it a gamma intercept or whatever you want. But that's just where we have a gamma of zero, then that gives us negative one squared times two times negative seven. That's just one, that's just two. So that's two together times negative seven is negative 14. So we get zero comma negative 14 as our y-intercept. Okay, one more quick one here. So notice that I was using symbols that were not just x and y. Now these are definitely not x and y. Does that change anything? Technically, no. So yeah, we have a function a of no. These are Japanese characters. So we want to find the no intercept. We can factor that. So notice that we have something squared minus something squared. So first thing plus second thing times first thing minus second thing. So even though the, this is a Japanese character, doesn't matter. Still works the same as x, right? So we see that a of null equals zero when null equals plus or minus one. So we have negative one comma zero and one comma zero. What about the y-intercept? Well, if we evaluate a of zero, we get zero squared minus one or just negative one. Therefore, zero comma negative one is the y-intercept. All right, so that's the end of this. So I will see you in the next video.